Hi, I'm Dale McKegg. I'm with the Canadian Transportation Agency. My presentation at the Farmers Forum on Green Transportation was on understanding the maximum revenue entitlement program that's done by the agency, commonly known as the MRE. The MRE, sometimes called the uh, revenue cap, which is actually incorrect, only applies to CN and CP, the they're prescribed railways for the act. And it's only applicable to grain that's exported through the west coast to Vancouver, Prince Rupert, or the east through um, Thunder Bay, or for grain going farther than Thunder, Thunder Bay at Armstrong, Ontario, after that commercial rate supply. So the MRV basically came into effect in the, the year 2000. It was a, a new program in that year. And it's basically a formula with six variables and it applies to each railway individually. So there's an MRE for CN and an MRE for CP. And three of the variables never change. And that's the, the base year volume, the base year revenues, and the average length of haul in the base year. And then there are three variables that change every year. The average length of haul for the crop year, the volumes, and then there's a, an inflation called the volume related composite price index that the agency considers. So what happens every year is the rail, the railways move grain uh, and we calculate their average length of haul for that year for each railway and it's it adjusts the average rate that you get from the first the base year. So there's a, a small adjustment for whether the average length of haul is longer or shorter than the base year. And then that has an average rate per ton. Then it's multiplied by the volume that each railway hauls that year plus times the VRCPI. So that's how the MRE itself is calculated. It's the volumes and the length of haul in this particular crop year and the inflation factor for, for that crop year. And so each one has a, a volume related comp, uh, sorry, each one has an MRE. And then we get that, and then we have to cal calculate the, the revenues in a particular year. So the revenues, all the grain tariffs that the, the railways were charged. So all their tariffs for moving grain, plus any special services, car hire, uh, any uh, charges for, for uh, special services, those all go into revenue. And then, but then there's deductions from revenue that are, or deductions from revenue are things like they have multi-car block incentives, incentives for weekend or special loading. And also there's deductions from what are called industrial development funds. That's where railways assist a grain company or grain handling enterprise in putting in track or something what the railway pays that's amortized over a set number of years, depending on the length of the contract or the length of age of the tract in the case of whether if the railway maintains the ownership of the track. So those are deductions from revenue. There's also things that railways charge that aren't considered revenue, like penalties for not loading on time, demurrage um, for actually not getting the cars unloaded or on time. And sometimes they have a long-term contract penalties for not, not fulfilling the contract. So those are deductions. Those are not counted as revenue. Things like um, penalties, sorry, penalties paid by the railways are not deductions from revenue. So if the railway pays a shipper a penalty for, for not getting cars there on time or something, that, that's not included. So you get, we determine the MRE, we determine the revenues, and then for each company every year. Now the one factor that, the other factor that goes in other than mileage and, and volume is the volume related composite price index. And it's a, basically it's a, a railway inflator. It's specific for railways. And unlike the MRE, there's only one VRCPI. We do one VRCPI that applies to both railways. The VRCPI is an, in, an inflation index, basically, and it has four major components, labor, fuel, materials, and other. The largest uh, component is labor. Labor counts for about a little over one third of the index. And it's probably the easiest one to calculate because there's so many labor contracts 
with the unions at the railways that were a lot of their labor is unionized so they have contracts so they continue on so we can forecast into the next year what the labor price will be fuel roughly about 25 percent of the index it's very difficult to forecast so we don't actually forecast it ourselves we use three third party forecasters and, and use their results for forecasting fuel into the future uh, materials well we do a forecast based on third party forecasters as well for a basket of material goods that the railways use they use probably hundreds of thousands of different items and so we use a representative basket we get third party forecasts for that and then we forecast the, the increase in that then there's the other category the other category is the cost of capital it's depreciation it's uh, the hopper car adjustment for 2007 2008 uh, any other hopper car adjustments for leased cars that have been owned or leased, cars that are leased or purchased to replace the government cars that have been taken out of service. So that's the other category. So those four categories make up the VRCPI, and the VRCPI is, is a forecast for the next year. So when we do the MRE in, in December, and it's due by December 31st every year by law, the VRCPI for that particular crop year was done almost 20 months before. So the VRCPI is out and put out by April the 30th for the upcoming crop year to allow the railways to plan. And the MRE calculation or determination is done December 31st and it's looking backwards. So the main thing to remember about the MRE is that it, it's not a cap on the revenue. What it is is a, basically it's a cap on the average cost that the railways can charge, the average price railways can charge, multiplied by volume. So the more they move, the more they make. And that's the way the MRE and the BRCPI work. Thank you.